anyone have a spoken request you want the class to pray about anywhere, just let us know. Anyone? Good. Just remember this. Yeah. 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 Let's just let's hold Gene up in prayers, uh, waiting for a kidney. Sounds like on, it's on the list. So let's pray. Let's pray for that situation. Anyone else? Yes, let's remember this. Yeah. Yes, let's remember this. Others? Just need to pray for my parents, my mom and dad, if you will. Um, unspoken requests. Lift your hand. Let's remember these. So let's all pray together. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, God, for another day that you've given us, a beautiful day, a wonderful day, God, to come to your house to, to worship, Lord, to lift you up, Lord. We thank you so much, God, for each and every blessing that you've given us, Lord, for keeping us this week, Lord, for keeping your hand upon us, Lord, in situations that we don't even realize that you've moved and, and, and ministered for us, Lord, and to us. Father, we pray, Lord, for each need, Lord, that was called out before you, Lord, the sickness, God, we know, God, we can turn to you, Lord, for healing, we can turn to you for help. We pray, God, that you'd touch these different needs, Lord, and minister healing, Lord, to those that are sick in body, Lord, those that are burdened down, Lord, those that are struggling, God, we pray for strength and help for them. Father, we pray, Lord, for each and every unspoken request. Father, I just pray that you would touch each need, Lord, that's represented, Lord, each hand that was raised, Lord, we know that you see and we know that you care. We just ask God that you would move upon these needs. Bless our service today, Lord. We just pray, God, that you would uh, minister, Lord, that uh, each thing that's done here today, Lord, will be done for your glory and your honor. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. All right. The title of our lesson today is Be Filled with the Spirit. Be Filled with the Spirit. This is Pentecost Sunday, 50 days, 7th. Sunday after Easter, and of course our lesson today is about the gift that Jesus left for each and every one of us, that God has provided for us the gift of the Holy Spirit. It is God's will for every believer to be filled with the Spirit as a title of our lesson today, and to allow the Holy Spirit to be active in our life. We look at the golden text just for a minute which is part of our lesson, uh, verse 18, be not drunk with wine where it says, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, and this Spirit-filled life that, that Paul is writing about here, it's not a, a one-time thing, but it's an ongoing experience when he says to be filled with the Spirit, to continually to allow the Holy Spirit uh, to be active in our life. So and when we think of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you think of what Acts 2, 1, and 4, being a Pentecostal church. Uh, but uh, the, today's lesson will show us that there's the ministry again of the Holy Spirit. It, it's ongoing, and it, it didn't start at Acts chapter 2. It's, you know, we'll, we'll look in the Old Testament and, and see examples of, of him and his anointing there, and also after Acts chapter 2, um, but uh, again, Pentecost comes from the actual feast of the Pentecost that uh, the Jews observed, and, and that feast was um, 50 days after the Passover, so that's where we get the term day, you know, day of Pentecost or Pentecostal. All right, let's go ahead and get into our lesson. And we do start out in the Old Testament in the book, uh, book of Numbers. Uh, chapter 11, verses 24 through 29 says, And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and a, and a, and a 
and spake unto him and took the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the 70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, the name of the other Medad, and the spirit rested upon them. And they were of them that were written, uh, but went not out into the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. And there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the people, all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Hmm. Moses, described as the meekest man on earth, right? And when we think about meekness, we know it's not weakness. It's an internal fortitude. It's, uh, it's trusting in what you stand upon. It's, it's not talking the talk, but it's walking the walk. And, and so Moses was a man of, of great strength. Uh, if you read all of chapter 11 here, you'll see that um, uh, their children of Israel were constantly complaining, griping, uh, and it had gotten on Moses' last nerve here. Uh, and what happened, you know, uh, you know, they were complaining about everything. It's complaining about manna, angel food. Oh, every day the same old thing. I wish we could go back to Egypt and, you know, eat of the fish, you know, of, of the River Nile. Of course, they would have to catch them, wouldn't they? So, but, uh, you know, and so they kept complaining and complaining and, They'd complain to Moses, and Moses would intercede. He said, Moses is very frustrated. He's very fed up. So what do you do when you're very frustrated, when you're fed up with things? Well, we may do different things, but what did Moses do? Moses talked to God about it, so Moses did the right thing. Here, he talked to God about it, and then he just he, he brought his grievances to God. Sometimes, you know, we have to do that, you know, when we get fed up. And Moses said, did I birth this people did I take them to raise I don't think I did God but and now they want meat where can I get meat to feed this 600,000 men and then the women and children and I mean we don't even have enough cattle if we slaughtered all of our livestock it wouldn't be enough to feed them you know one meal and uh and he went on to say Lord you just just put me out of my misery just I just want to go home I've, I've had enough and but uh God wasn't through with Moses and uh, he replied to Moses. He said, no, we're not going to do that. Here's what we're going to do. You choose you out 70 elders uh, of, of the men of Israel. You bring them to the tabernacle. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to meet with you, and I'm going to meet with them. And Moses, I'm going to take the spirit that I've placed upon you, and I'm going to place it upon these 70 elders so that they can help you bear this burden and help you uh, deal with all this complaining so that you don't get fed up so that you don't you know so that you don't get frustrated and 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 also he also said by the way uh they're gonna have meat enough in fact they're gonna have so much meat they're gonna be sick of it uh i think one one translation says they, they're gonna vomit it out of their nose uh, i mean so yeah they're gonna have enough and god did as he declared this uh our verse just tells us here that and Moses did choose 70 elders, and, and God did come down, and he met with them. He met with Moses, and he met with, uh, with the elders. There was 68 of the 70 in the tabernacle, and, and God gave them the spirit that was upon Moses. Well, how do you know that? Because of the evidence. What happened? They began to prophesy. They began to do what? They began to speak the word of God under anointing. So that was evidence, right, that the Spirit of God rested upon them. The same Spirit that, that, that was upon Moses was upon them. So they began to prophesy. They began to speak the word. And then there was a report that come. There's two men that remained out of the camp. They weren't in the tabernacle. Me, Dad, and Eldad Johnson. They were late. Did I say Johnson? I didn't mean to say that. 
Eldad and me dad. They were late. They were late for church. They were in the camp, right? So, uh, but they were also the spirit of the Lord, you know, that, that was placed upon Moses was also placed upon them. And now they were also prophesying in the camp. So two, uh, some young man comes and reports this to Joshua, uh, who is a uh, young understudy of Moses at this time. And he, he, tells, he tells Moses, oh, Moses, these two men, you know, Eldad and Medad, they're, they're prophesying, you know, in the camp. Uh, you know, they're proclaiming the word of God in the camp. So it's okay to proclaim God's word in the tabernacle, in the church, right? But when we get outside of these four walls, we don't want to say anything about God, do we? Oh, my goodness. We don't want to, we don't want to talk about God outside of these four walls, do we? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, and what was Moses' answer to Joshua? He said, I'm glad that, Eldad and me dad I'm glad they were late I'm glad they were still in the camp you know when this anointing came down uh, because we need to hear the word of God in the tabernacle right we need to hear the anointed word here but we also need it out there and actually we need it out there more than we need it in here because there's people out there that don't know it and they don't see it so where we live right where we work where we do business and Moses answer was oh I wish that the Lord would put his spirit upon all people did you ever think exactly what what was Moses wishing for well what did Jesus say? He said, I have to go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. The Holy Spirit who will be with you, and be in you, wherever you go. Whether you're in the tabernacle or whether you're in the camp. Whether you're in the church or whether it's out there where you do business or it's out there where you live. So Moses was wishing for our day, wasn't he? That's what he was, that's what he was looking for. And, and that's the day that we live in. We have, we have God's spirit with us wherever we go as a child of God. Uh, we have it where we, where we live, where we work, where we meet people, where we do business. So, you know, Joshua failed to see what Moses saw. Moses said, there's plenty of room for everyone to serve God. You don't have to be jealous over that. And Jesus, uh, Jesus kind of had a same, similar situation. Mark chapter 9, 38 through 41, where John answered him saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us. We forbade him because he followeth not us. We saw somebody, you know, casting out devils in your name. He didn't belong to our church. So we told him to quit. <laughs> Is that kind of what he's saying? Yeah. What was Jesus' answer? He's about like Moses. Wasn't it? But Jesus said, forbid him not. Don't, don't tell him to quit, for there is no man which do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me for he that is not against us guess what he's he's taken our part he's with us and goes on and says whoever should give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ verily I say unto you that person shall not lose his reward uh, so there's plenty of room for everybody to serve God you don't have to elbow anybody out any comments here? Okay, let's go on to Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Oh, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. 
And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, things were beginning to happen. But let's look back, just like we did with Moses. Let's look back a few days. How did these, uh, we know there was 120. How did, how did they get to this point? How did they, how did they prepare themselves or how did they ready themselves for, for, this, for, for this day? Uh, before Jesus ascended, uh, which happened 10 days before the day of Pentecost, he gave his followers instructions. And I think, you know, there was maybe as many as 500 uh, at one, here at one time. And, and here, Luke 24, 49, Jesus says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But here's what you got to do. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Tarry there until... You be endued with power from on high. So that's what Jesus told his followers. Go to Jerusalem. Wait for the promise. Uh, and again, you know, there's pr probably more than 120 that, that, that heard these instructions. Then Jesus ascended. After he ascended, what happened? Well, they, they went to Jerusalem. They were obedient. They followed Jesus' instructions. Uh, they waited for the promise and while waiting in other words again being obedient they prayed scripture tells us they prayed together they took care of some church business they replaced Judas I think one of you know as one of the apostles one of the disciples uh, and if if there were as many as 500 well you know some of them wandered off didn't they um, and so now we have left this 120 there was no wandering unlike the children of Israel there was no complaining because they they were there one mind and one accord they were tearing they weren't saying this is taking too long uh, they weren't saying oh look it's it's five minutes after 12 brother Cornette must have a button in his mouth instead of a lifesaver no they didn't say that they didn't say, oh, we got to get to Eli before they run out of turkey and dressing. we got to get to, or no, that would be uh, Esto, wouldn't it? Yeah. We've we got to get to Eli so we don't run out of fish. So, no, they didn't say that either. They were obedient to what Jesus told them to do. They tarried. They went to Jerusalem. They waited. They prayed. And one mind and one accord. So then... And we know what happened. Expecting, they were expecting suddenly what they were tearing for happened. That initial infilling, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And how did it take place? You know, uh, Acts 2 and 4, boy, I've got the wrong one here. Acts 2, 1 through 4 tells us exactly how it happened. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. There was a sound as a rushing mighty wind. Uh, flames appeared and hovered over each of them. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, in languages that they did not know. And these utterances were actually words and they were actually sentences because... We know that, you know, Scripture tells us what, that as they went out into the, into town, it's still speaking in other tongues, that people from all over the world, visitors, they heard what? They heard the word of God, the gospel proclaimed in their own language. People from all over the world heard this, and speaking fluently. And then, of course, Acts 2, 16, 17, Peter says, uh, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. 
I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall, shall dream dreams. Uh, and so, you know, this is that. This is what Joel, Joel prophesied. And now it was happening. This is what Moses was wishing for. Same thing that Joel prophesied. And now here it is taking place. Uh, Holy Spirit available to all believers, and Peter reinforces that in his sermon when he starts uh, s preaching uh, and, and declares that as well, that, that this Holy Spirit is available to all believers. So, so what happens when we are saved, when we become a child of God? Um, let's look at 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit baptizes us into the one body, the body of Christ. So we're baptized into the body of Christ, and we receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Romans 8 and 9, you're not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, where does it dwell? It dwells in you if you're, when you're saved. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Very, very plain, isn't it? You know, that's how salvation takes place. But then uh, the indwelling of that spirit also identifies us as family. Because your sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, you're a son. If a son, then an heir of God, an heir of God through Christ. So, so there, you know, there we are with salvation. We're together as a family, but then, but then there's also, after this, we can be baptized, we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, and even... John talks about this in his gospel in the first chapter. He talks about Jesus. He said, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw him by record that this is the Son of God. So, so Jesus baptizes us into with the Holy Ghost. So there's the steps that, that, that took place here in Acts 2, 1 through 4. Um, any comments here on these verses? Hmm? Say, say I, I didn't hear you. Mm-hmm. Different people, yeah. Well, but, of course, there's, there's speaking, of course, you know, gifts of the Spirit. There's, you know, the message and then the interpretation. But then also you can, when you, and, and this has been testified, I, not personally experienced by me, but, but other people have told me about this. I think even Brother Cornette may even said something about it. Like when you're gathered together in big meetings, people from every part of the world, right? And you see uh, people under the anointing speaking in other tongues. And sometimes it's somebody from a foreign country speaking in English. But to them, of course, it's another tongue that they may not even know and yet here you can hear it. And it's the same, you know, with us, you know, speaking in an unknown tongue, but yet, you know, it's a language that somebody else can understand, which is different than the gift of the Spirit where there's an interpretation for, for the body. That, does that make it a lot cloudier? <laughs> <laughs> 
but I mean, I've, I've seen and, you know, heard people talk about being in services, you know, with, with people and, and, you know, different languages being spoken. And like I say, somebody may be speaking in English that doesn't know English. And in Acts 1 and 8, you know, uh, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, why? Well, you shall receive power. What, for what? To be witnesses. Sp share the gospel. To, it's what we're here for, isn't it? It's, it's our basic uh, call is to, is to share the gospel to the world, to the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the world. It's what, it's what we're enabled to do what we're called to do as, as, as believers in Christ, to share what he has given us. Acts uh, chapter 2, verses 41 through 47, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. So here, you know, what happened? Well, Peter preached this sermon. The, the crowd came because, because of what, you know, what was happening, right? And, and all these people then heard the word of God preached, and and the same day there were added in them about three thousand souls, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayers. And fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, and all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people in the Lord, added to the church daily such as should be saved. Okay, so after Peter's sermon, what, about 3,000 were saved? Uh, so they begin, the church begins. Uh, the church that, that we know today this is where it began. It began with no building, uh, uh, no place, but here they are linked together, brought together by the Spirit, right? The indwelling of the Spirit that brings us all together as believers in Christ, uh, as family. So they, they follow a set of doctrine from the Old Testament, from Jesus' teaching, and they fellowship together. They breaking of bread, uh, the Lord's Supper, and also just, just fellowshipping. Something that the year 2020, last year, right? We don't even want to talk about it. Something that the year 2020 has stolen from the church. Stolen fellowship. Don't believe me? Look around. You missing anybody? You missing somebody that used to be here every Sunday? Sunday night, look around. You missing anybody that used to be here every Sunday night? What about Wednesday night? Ouch. Look around. You missing anybody that used to be here every Wednesday night? 2020 stole from us. Fellowship, something that the body needs. The body needed it back then. The body needs it today. So, I'll leave it there. So, so but yeah, look around you. Just look around you. So, so they communicate, you know, what did they do? They, they, they took communion together. They, communi they actually communicated together. They fellowshiped together. They... Uh, they brought things together. They had all things common. They, if someone was, if they saw someone that had a need, they took care of that need, um, and that was a regular practice for the for the early church. No one did without. And when they gathered together, they praised God. They worshipped. So those on the outside, what did it say? Praising God, having favor with all the people. Those on the outside saw it. Well, they said, this is pretty good. I like this. I think I'll come and I'll join. What a novel idea, right? For the church to 
live Christ-like, express the joy of the Lord, have an impact on the community. You say, boy, I'd like to be in that group. I'd like to go there. They seem like they've got something that I need. So when we do this, as it not, not only as individuals, but as a body, it does say something to the community, doesn't it? It says, I want that. That's something that I can, that I can, I can enjoy. And in Ephesians 5, 18 through 21, Paul writes, Be not drunk with wine, where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So here Paul writes, you know, he, he contrasts it, doesn't he? Be not drunk on wine or be not drunk on, on intoxicating substances, we'll say today, right? Uh, because when, when that happens, you give yourself over to the control of, of other things in life that will be dangerous to you and put you in dangerous situations, not only physically, spiritually as well. Uh, you know, you, you relinquish your control but he says, you know, there's one thing you can relinquish your control to. Be filled with the Spirit. Uh, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Um, and, and again, when he says this, it's like it's, it's a constant thing. You know, it's not like, you know, uh, last week I had an experience with God. You know, I, I was filled with the Spirit. You know, what about this week? What about tomorrow? It's every day. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. What will that do for you? Well, it put joy in your heart. Uh, uh, you're giving over your control to the Holy Spirit. You're being led by the Spirit. Uh, always being filled by the Spirit. That's a continual process. And, and it doesn't matter how old you are as a, as a child of God, if you're, if you're a new convert, uh, if you're a new convert, you, you grow in grace and knowledge and, and you, you, you be filled, you be baptized with the Spirit. If you're a Spirit-filled believer, then you continue to be filled with the Spirit. So what's the result of that? Look what he says in Ephesians, well, Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns, uh, making melody, giving thanks, submitting, worshiping, you know, worshiping God, lifting him up. And these are all things that the Spirit will lead you to do. And, and these are all things I think you can definitely say would have a positive or a good impact on your life. Not only on your life, but even those around you, right? Because we've all been around people that maybe don't have a very good impact, right? Nobody in here, but somebody, you know, in the camp outside maybe that uh, maybe is negative or whatever. Any comments here? Okay. Um, let's see, let's go on to, uh, yeah, Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Um, child of God, you... Your flesh is crucified, and if it rises back up, what do you do? You, you crucify it, right? You put it down. Uh, why do you do that? So that the Holy Spirit can work in us and through us to produce, produce what? Produce this fruit, of course, that's good fruit uh, that is listed here. Uh, Jesus taught us also about fruit bearing as well. 
uh, Matthew 7, 15 through 20, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits, right? Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? No. If Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. If a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, wow, it's hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. What kind of fruit do we bear? This is gardening season, isn't it? If you have a garden, uh, you think about bearing fruit or bearing vegetables, I guess, the same way. Um, but uh, for your garden to bear fruit or to bear vegetables, you have to put some effort into it, don't you? Um, it is said that there was an old man <coughs> lived on Chicken Gizzard Ridge, we'll say. Um, always his garden was weedless, clean, uh, brought forth a lot of vegetables just you know it was just very very fertile and people would come by and they'd look at it and they were amazed you know and and, and finally somebody come by they asked the old guy I said how how do you do this what is your secret is it the plant you get is it your fertilize what do you spray it with what is your secret how do you keep this garden in such good shape and the old guy looked at him and said, well, you just need one thing. And they said, what's that? You need a wife with a good hoe. <laughs> or maybe he said you need a good wife with a hoe. I, I don't know how, he, you know, which way he answered it. But anyway, so, so what am I saying? Well, <laughs> you know, a garden, you know, we all know we've got to put effort into it for it to bear what we want it to bear. Jesus said to bear fruit, you better put some effort into your life, in your spiritual life. Whether you need a spiritual hole or whatever, uh, we, need to, we need to invest in ourselves spiritually. And we need to make sure that we're doing the right thing, that, uh, that we're, you know, investing in the Word of God, investing in our prayer life, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. Let Him be your lead. Let Him be your guide. Uh, it is His desire to work in us and through us. But we have to allow that to happen. Um, and think about this. It's, that's, that's not just for us as individuals. But it's also for us as a body of Christ, for us as a body, as this church, uh, we need to bear fruit. This church needs to bear fruit. To do that, we, as a body, we need to put some effort into it to invest in it, don't we? To invest in, in this body to, so that it bears good fruit. Because what happens? What happens if you don't bring forth good fruit? Jesus told us what happens. We don't want that to happen to us, do we, or to anybody else. Um, and again, as the body, if when we bear good fruit, when we make this way of life desirable for those out in the camp or for those outside these walls, then that, that's, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a way that we're bearing fruit, you know, as they look to us and desire what, what you and I have as, as children of God. Any comments here? Okay, Acts 4, 31. <clears throat> and when they had prayed, there they prayed again. What about that? What happened? When they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, this is chapter 4. I thought that happened in chapter 2. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart and one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power... 
gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. There it is again, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them, brought the prices of the things that were sold, laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made every man according as he had need. So again, so now the church, you know, in chapter 4, we're seeing, you know, the persecution start to rise up. Uh, uh, so, and they were beginning to experience this. So what happens? Uh, they get together again. They, they pray. They ask for bold. What do they ask for? They don't ask for relief of persecution. They ask for boldness to speak God's word. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, the place was shaken. They were all filled again with the Holy Ghost. And they were given that boldness uh, to to speak the word of God as they were refilled, I guess you would call it, with the Holy Spirit. Uh, they, uh, and it brought a, another spirit of unity, of oneness, closeness uh, to the body. Uh, they pooled their resources, again, so that no one would be without, so that, you know, everyone's need was being met. And, and, and again, in the face of Danger in the face of persecution, the church continued to what? They continued to grow. Wow. Uh, not only in number, but they continued, to, they, they began to grow spiritually as well. Um, the Holy Spirit unites us, brings us together. Ephesians 4 3 through 6, he writes this endeavoring to keep what? The unity of the Spirit in the bond of, pre, bond of peace. There's one body, one spirit. Because there's one spirit, there's one body, right? Uh, even as you're called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father above all, who is above all and through all and in you all. The oneness, the unity. And in the last of our lesson from 2 Corinthians, yes, Three, five through six. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Where's that word again? We had it last week and maybe the week before. Uh, a very powerful word that we talked about. And it's a very simple word as well, sufficient sufficient uh, to live a Christ-like life to minister the gospel we're not sufficient in ourselves we can't do it in ourselves that's where the spirit comes in right uh, so our sufficiency the only way that we can be sufficient enough to live a holy life uh, and declare his word is the enabling of the Holy Spirit who again makes us sufficient uh, and we need to continually rely on him to keep us sufficient so sum up our lesson we need the baptism in the Holy Spirit today just as much as this as the early church needed we know they needed it uh, because you know scripture records that but the world that we live in today, while it's different than the world they lived in, it's still a hostile place for the child of God, isn't it? Uh, you know, different places, different types of hostility. Um, and, and we, again, are not sufficient in ourselves, are we? So we need, we need him to be sufficient. Uh, and the baptism in the Holy Ghost is for the child of God today. Just as much as it was in, in, in the day of the early church, God wants uh, to accomplish in your life and in my life what, what, what his will is for us. And, and the promise, you know, it was declared in God's word. We know God's word is eternal, don't we? So what he has promised us, he will, he will deliver to us and for us. Appreciate your attention, your comments this morning.
morning everybody we want to welcome everybody uh, a lot of times when the pastors is gone uh, a lot of the members stay out but y'all have it y'all are here and we are so proud of, of you and we just appreciate all that's come out and uh, we'll to worship the lord this morning and we just appreciate each and every one of you and we've got visitors we're glad to have you with us this morning and pastor he's left uh Left it in good hands. Brother Rig's going to be a preaching here after a while. And I always love to hear him when he's singing and preaching. And uh, he always does a good job. And I think Brother Roger, are you preaching tonight? No? Huh? Oh, excuse me. It is. Now it is youth night. But uh, come on out and uh, support the youth. And uh, they always do a good job. They always have a good program. And uh, we just come out and support them, and Danny always does a good job, always has a good message, so come out to it. Uh, it is good to see Sister Judy. She's been through an ordeal, and glad to see her back. She's uh, sent a card to the church. Okay, it says... All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. And uh, so thankful that the Lord made you, so thankful for your kindness too. So thank you so much for your prayers, texts, calls, and thoughts during my recent surgery and hosp hospital stay. And God bless you, my church family, and she's wanted to thank everybody this morning. And it is good to see her back. Okay, we're going to start singing. Uh, we're going to turn it over to, to your brother Jeff this morning. It's good to see you here this morning to worship the Lord. Let's all stand, if you will. You can sing better standing. I can't sing either way, but anyway. Uh, help us sing, He Abides. <clears throat> I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way. For the hand of God in all my life I see. And the reason of my bliss, yes, the secret all is that the Comforter abides with me. He abides, He abides. Hallelujah, He abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way for the Comforter abides with me. Once my heart was full of Upon the tree, then I fell down at his feet, and there came a peace so sweet. Now the Comforter abides with me. Oh, he abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day. Satisfied my soul. 
soul since the Comforter abides with me. Oh, he abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk a narrow way for the Comforter abides with me. There's no thirsting for the things of this world that have taken wings. Long ago I gave them up and instantly. All my night was turned to day, all my burdens rolled away. Now the Comforter abides with me. Oh, he abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way, for the Comforter abides with me. Praise the Lord. Let's help us sing this chorus in worship. He is here. <clears throat> touches you, you'll never be the same, will you? But you'll be a new and improved version, that's for sure. What Jeff said is so true, isn't it? What he says, you're never the same. I want to take a prayer request this morning. Do we have any prayer requests? Okay. Yes, member of the Collins family. Yes. Yes, absolutely.
Praise God. Yeah. yeah. He does, yes. We need these praise reports, don't we? He didn't encourage he didn't encourage anybody. We appreciate it. Any others this morning? Okay, let's pray for Kenny Pickett this morning. Others? This morning. Okay, let's continue to remember him. Pray for him. Yeah, let's pray for these two. Others this morning? Okay. Good, praise God. <laughs> these rampages are precious now. Others? Okay. Others? Okay. Yeah, we have a retired church guy who wants to take the guy Friday at church at Camp Stone. Yes, remember that family. Help with that family. Okay. Okay. You know, let's all stand and just you know, be praying for also for the rest of the service. Pray for our nation this morning. Lord, we come to you this morning so with thankful hearts, Lord. Lord, we love these praise reports. Lord, to show that you're still ancient prayer. If we just come before you, Lord, with a humble heart and a believing heart. And Lord, we say so thankful for your precious love, your saving grace, Lord. We pray you for it. And Lord, we come to you on behalf of these Lords that are still sick, these that are hurting this morning. And Lord, we pray for a continued pray for Rashi this morning. Lord, we just pray for a healing prayer. Pray for Diane. Pray for Paula, Paulette this morning. Lord, pray. Lord, they can find her a liver first so she can be made well again. And we pray for the Collins family, Lord, that lost a loved one. We pray comfort for them. Pray for Lord, do we just pray for. And Lord, we pray for Roy's request and his wife's request this morning. Lord, we pray for those. Lord, we pray for the unspoken requests and given in. Lord, you know what they are. We pray for them. Lord, for Sister Crockett's request. Each one, each one is so important. Lord, we pray for those that are hurting this morning. Lord, as we pray for salvation for our children and our grandchildren. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, we pray for help for our nation, our leaders. And we ask this thing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We're going to take up a tithe and offer this morning. Brother Roger, would you come up and pray the blessing over the offering this morning? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, God, it's we come into your presence this morning with joy and thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we're here by divine appointment. It's just not by chance that you've brought us all together. We're here by divine appointment. You've got something in store for each one of us if we just open and ready to receive what you have. So, Father, we just pray for the service this morning, the speaker of the hour. I just pray a fresh anointing on him. And, God, we just pray for an obedient spirit for each one of us. And now for this offering, God, you've given to us and now we give back a portion to you. Bless the offering, bless the gift and the giver, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
me I can trust you completely so why am I doubting when you prove that you'd fight for me you walk me through fire You're in this with me, I won't be afraid, when the smoke billows higher, oh and higher, and it feels like I can barely breathe, I walk through these fires, cause you're walking with me. by your mercy covered by your peace I'm living out the victory it doesn't mean I won't feel the heat you walk me through smoke billows higher oh and higher and it feels like i can barely breathe i walk through these fires cause you're walking with me Lord, how could I question when you prove that you died for me? You walked me through fire.
Danny, can you hear me now? Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much, my brother. That's coming in loud and clear, isn't it? Yes, is it all right? Let me say good morning to everyone. Good morning to everyone. <laughs> I greet you. <laughs> hey, Daddy, that's not too loud, is it, brother? I greet you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. I want to take my liberty to thank God, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus. And I want to thank Jesus for going to Calvary and dying that I could live. <laughs> I thank Jesus for leaving the Father in all his riches with calmness, cool and serene. He came down and gave his last blood to set the vilest sinner clean. <laughs> Woo! Thank God for Jesus. I want to thank God for the Church of God at Bernard Ridge. <laughs> and I want to thank God for you. I want to thank God for you who are so faithful to come to God's house. I'll tell you, it'd be a lonely place for us preachers and pastors if no one come to sit on the pews. <laughs> you were saying amen. Uh, we, we would feel like Ezekiel when he was trying to have a revival in a graveyard. <laughs> Because empty pews cannot say amen. I want to thank God for our pastor, Brother Lindsey Cornett. He watches over us. He cares for our soul. And he watches out over us. And I want to thank God for Sister Cornett. She stands by his side. <laughs> of the songs that I sing, the song I want to sing this morning, I understand is Brother Danny Stevens' favorite. <laughs> Hello. And the song is titled, If You Believe. I, I read about, I don't have it right, right, sister. You start it now. Fine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I read about how Paul and Silas were in jail. Nobody there. There's nobody there to go the bell. But when they prayed, they found that God was on their side. The jail has no one open wide if you believe you shall receive there's not a trouble or care the good Lord can relieve he is just the same today all you gotta do is trust and pray and believe you must believe when Daniel said Within the hungry lines then nobody thought that there was any hope for him. But all night long, the lions never took a bite. God took away their appetite. And if you believe, you shall receive. 
There's not a trouble or care a good Lord can't relieve. He is just the same today, and all you got to do is trust and pray and believe. You must believe. When David stood before Goliath with his slain Goliath land. That's such a puny little thing, but David knew his faith in God would stand the test. He flung the rock. I did the rest. You shall receive. There's not a trouble or care. Oh, good Lord, can't relieve. He is just the same today, and all you got to do is trust and pray. If you believe, you shall receive. There's not a trouble or care a good Lord can't relieve. He is just the same today. All you got to do is trust and pray and believe. David stood before Goliath with the slain Goliath land. Pretty little thing, but David knew his faith in God would stand the test. He flung the rock. God did the rest. There's not a trouble or care the good Lord can't relieve. Just the same today, and all you got to do is trust and pray and believe. Thank you, brother. Thank you for playing the drums while I was a singing. Thank you, brother. You made my singing look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful to have a good time with God's people? Yeah. I want you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of Esther. Deep into Old Testament scripture, the book of Esther. And I want us together to look at chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. The book of Esther is a familiar book. And so we look at it together just briefly. It's wonderful when you preach to God's people that know his word. <laughs> Amen? Because when you get on something they know something about, they can help you preach. <laughs> and I love that. Have you turned to the book of Esther chapter 4? And we'll, we'll start with verse number 10. Stand with me to your feet for the reading of the sacred scripture. Again Esther spake unto Hatak. And gave, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's providence do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king, unto the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his, to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that he may live. But I have not been called to come into the king's these 30 days. Verse 12. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not, with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. 
For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargements and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shazam and fast for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. I want to thank you for your undivided attention as I read the word of God in in your hearing. While you are remain standing. I want you to look back at verse 14. Just glance at it, if you will. Now understand that verse 14 is the key verse to the entire book of Esther, this wonderful book that has 10 chapters. And I want to point out to you my thought and the heart throb of my message this morning. It is, I, I was looking to count the words. <laughs> it's six words in the last sentence in verse 14. For such a time as this. Say it again. For such a a time as this. I tell you what I wish you'd do. I wish you'd stretch your hand toward me and ask God to touch me, touch me with fire from off the altar of God and touch my body, soul, mind, and strength as I'm, I minister to you today. Oh, <laughs> Glory to your name, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I thank you for this group of people, Lord. I thank you for your word, Lord. Add your blessings to the reading of the word of God. Anoint my head with fresh oil. And Lord, bring to my remembrance the things that I've studied and meditated upon. And Lord, if it be your will to give me a fresh loaf, give me a fresh loaf, oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. You may be seated when you feel to. I, as you, as you know, read in your hearing from a book in the Old Testament scripture. We love it. We love it. Understand that there's two books in the Bible that bear the name of a woman. And that's Ruth and Esther. And I'll tell you, we wouldn't do without either one of them, would we? <laughs> Amen. Because they're kin books and they are wonderful. What I want to do this morning by way of a little bit of a foundation for my message. I want to mention four characters that's in the book of Esther, and I've done read some of them in your hearing, and I want to touch on them, and and I'm sure I won't share anything with you don't already know, but then I'll go on to something else. The first character that I want to share is the king. But I want you not to forget. So I'm mentioning it to you throughout my message this morning. For such a time as this. And I want to mention the king's name. It's a, it's a little tough, tough to pronounce and I had to drill on it. Ahaz you Eris. Ahaz you Eris. Brother Sunday school teacher, is that close? Thank you. 
He is, he is the king at this setting. And he had a vast empire. He ruled from, from uh, uh, he, he, he ruled from India to Ethiopia. Now that's a lot, a lot of territory. And he was the king. Then I also have mentioned to you, read in your hearing, Mordecai and Esther. Now, they, they are such good characters in this book and the Bible and in this story. I understand that Mordecai was of the tribe of Benjamin and, and Esther was his cousin. They were cousins. Now, Esther's parents had died and Mordecai took her under his wing and more or less adopted her. And this is a great story. It's a beautiful story. Now, Mordecai was good to Esther. Now, we know the story of Esther. She is the hero of this book. Now, Esther rose to be queen of Persia in this case. And that's the reason that she's so wonderful. And she's the hero of our story. Now, Ahasuerus had divorced his wife, Vesta. And, and need I to say, but I can't hardly get away from it, divorce didn't start in our day. <laughs> it's, it started way back in, with King Ahasuerus. And you know the story. But because of Esther's God-given beauty and because of God's hand been in it all, she rolled to be a high, lofty position in the kingdom of Persia. She rose to be queen. And thank God for this story. Now, there's another character that I need to get to, and that's just four. Of course, there's other characters. And that is Haman. Every Bible reader and everyone has touched on this story know about, we sometimes call him Wicked Haman. But he's here, and he's in this story. Now, Haman, the Bible says more than once in the book of Esther that he was an enemy of the Jews. <laughs> Glory. Now, there's 15 minutes preaching there, but I don't have time. He was an enemy of the Jews. Now, I sure hadn't changed, has it? Amen? That there's, the Jew, thank you for the amen. <laughs> God's people, the Hebrew people, the very elect of God have enemies. And, and they get it in their head that they should not exist on planet earth. And they try their, their best to just annihilate them. Uh, now we know that's of the devil. But anyway, he, it says more than once that Haman was enemy of the Jews. Now he was, uh, 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 he was of the people that Saul was supposed to go. Uh, the, the word is Amalek, Amalekite. Uh, Haman was an Amalekite, and that's the people that God told King Saul to go and destroy every one of them. And he and he left some of them, and now we have Haman. And so Haman was enemy of the Jews. But there's some, something that really stirred up his anger and really infuriated him. And that is that he rose, he got a position. Now stay with me. Haman got a position and he was main, made prime minister of Persia. Now that's a high position in the government. And when he got that position... He got it in his head that everyone in his providence of the 127 providence in Persia, he got it in his head that in the, in the uh, 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 providence where he was that they all should reverence him and bow to him. But Mordecai, the Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, just simply said, I will not. He refused to bow to him. And Mordecai had done made up his mind. He was going to bow to one person, and that was Jehovah God. <laughs> and that he did. And so that really stirred up Haman. Now Haman, because he rose to be prime minister 
got close to King Ahaz Urias. And so he influenced Ahaz Urias to write a decree to kill all of the Jews in one day. Now, you, if you haven't heard this story, maybe you have heard, but stay with me. All of the Jews in one day. I don't know the head count, but I do know there was 127 providence in the, in the kingdom of Persia. And, and the decree went out. Woo! Why are you so excited, Brother Riggs? Because God's helping me preach. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited. Amen. Hey, 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 hey Daniel, ain't that the truth? If, if, when you're up here in honor of the gun, you preach all, appreciate all the help you can get, don't you, brother? And, and so, so he, he, the king made a decree. Hey, hey, da, hey, hey uh, people in the crow's nest, am I still on? Thank you, thank you. And so he wrote a decree to have all the Jews in the providence killed in one day. And the message went out on horses, camels, and it took to all the Jews. And, and it was going to wipe them out, kill them all in one day. We've heard of a, a sl slaughter that was similar to it. And that was when Hitler was going strong over there in Germany. Can I get a witness on that? Amen. But, more, woo, woo, glory. But Mordecai got the word, and Mordecai sat on the street corner in sackcloth and ashes, and he did fast and pray and talk to God. Now, he sent this message to, to Esther because it had been 30 days, she said, since she'd been before the king. And he, he told Esther, he said, now, Esther, you can't keep quiet in this situation. You can't just be uh, idle. And, and be neutral in this situation, in other words. You can't stay quiet because if you do, deliverance and providence will come to the Jews from another source. But you and your father's house will, will be killed. And so uh, 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 Esther got the message uh, and she and her maidens began to fast and pray for God to move. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Well, I, I got that as fast as I could. I, I, hey, I, I hope you brought a sandwich because that's just my that's just my introduction. <laughs> but but they got to but they got to the uh, Esther. Uh, she got stood up and spoke up and got a message to the king, and he wrote another decree. And this decree. He, he couldn't change the first one, but this de decree that all the Jews in the land could defend themselves. Ooh, what a story. And, and all I know how to say it, defend themselves they did. Glory, glory to the Lamb of God. Now, now saints of God, this has come to me. The Holy Spirit brought, to, brought it to me. Now, I know that Israel's been in war. I, I know that they're the elect of God. They're the Hebrew people. They're, they're the chosen of God. But I'm going to tell you, matters not, I, I, maybe I shouldn't say it just like that, but regardless of how many nations or how many people come against God's people, I, I want to tell you this morning, my money's on the Jews. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I labored to get there, but I'm not going to take it back. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, and so, defend themselves they did. And the Jews were saved and victory come. Victory come to this situation. Isn't that wonderful? Now, now, now saints, I, I got to move along. Now, I want you with me to fast forward, fast forward to the year 2021. <laughs> you know that? You're familiar with that year? 2021. And my thought is, for just such a time as this. Now, saints of God, we've all talked about the time. And we've all talked about such a time as this. And we've, 
we say different things about the time that we're living in. And, and, and sometimes, I guess we all label this time in which we live. Now, now, here's what I have for you. This time in which we live, such a time as this, is a troublesome time. This time is a dangerous time. <laughs> Glory. And this time is a changing time. If you don't believe things are fastly, fastly changing, did you check the price of gas before you got here? <laughs> Hello. And, and, and it's a fast changing time. But I, I remember a little verse of scripture in the Old Testament book that said, I am the Lord God and I change not. And I remember another little short verse of scripture in a book of Hebrews that says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Woo! Glory to God. <laughs> and, and so it's a fastly changing time. time that for just such a time as this, the time in which we are living, I believe that many in our society. Now, when I talk about our society, I, I want to make it clear that the devil don't have them all. <laughs> Hello? He don't have them all. But, but uh, 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 we, uh, it, it, many, I feel, in our society have lost their fear of death and lost their fear of God. They've lost their fear of God and lost their fear of death. Now, if we could get those folk to think about dying, we could get them to think about living. <laughs> I, just, I, I, just, I just inserted that. <laughs> Glory to God. And so for just such a time as this, this, I believe, is the worst corrupt time We've ever known anything about it. And, and it's hit high people in high places. It's hit people who's trying their best to, to rule and co control the government. It, 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 uh, it's a, in, in this hour, it's a time of corruption. Now, in, coupled with corruption is lying and cheating and, 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 and trying to rule. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Now, now hold on, say to God. <laughs> this time in which we are living, such a time as this, it's, is a time of the greatest religious deception known to man. <laughs> it's the greatest. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> I love preachers. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I, doesn't matter to me what faith they are. If they're on the rock, they're my brother. <laughs> I love preachers and I love preaching. <laughs> Glory to God. I do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But saints of God, I say this is all the love that I can muster up. I feel that in some of our churches that uh some of our pastors have quit praying and started playing. And I, I'm, well, that must have hit a B flat. <laughs> and, and I'm uneasy that some of them have, have started a, a, just a gimmick in the pulpit and, and, and gone to entertainment. <laughs> Glory to, to the Lamb of God. But I, I can tell you, because I'm among people that love me, I can tell you and I can tell them, if they'd give me five minutes, there's no conviction power to that. <laughs> Wonderful Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Such a time is this. I could... 
You could add to my list. Oh. Uh. Now, I think we say in such a time as this that this is the, maybe you haven't said it, maybe I have said it, but it seemed like I have said it, and I believe many of us think it. This is the worst time ever. This is the worst time that our world has ever experienced. Amen. Now, I got that out, so I won't say this. Church, that is not 100% theoretically correct. <laughs> you still love me? You still love me? Because I want to remind you of what Jesus said. Hey, you with me? I want to remind you of what Jesus said. He said, As it was, so shall it be. I didn't write the book. <laughs> he, 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 he reached back way back in time and way back in the Old Testament scripture and brought us up to date for this time, such a time as this. As it was, so shall it be. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, they were eating, drinking, marrying, given in marriage, and knew not until a, until a flood came and took them all away, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. And, and it, as it was, so shall it be. Now we know what the Bible says in the book of Genesis back in that day, that the imagination of their heart was on evil continually. They got up in the morning thinking about evil, went to bed thinking about evil. And if you'll read, I think it's Genesis chapter 6 again, twice it said, and violence had filled the land. <laughs> that was a long time before the invention of gunpowder. And now, now, <laughs> It, set, it breaks my heart and saddens my heart. In the city of Louisville, there's one to three murders every night. And so as it was, so shall it be. Now, it, 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 and then in the, book of, uh, in the book of Luke, I, I give that to the, hey, Danny, I give you scripture, Luke. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, blow your face on the sugar. <laughs> now, I understand that Noah and Lot lived centuries apart. But I want to tell you their lifestyle was similar. And I want to tell you their hearts got so far from God <laughs> that that punishment came and destruction came and in, in this scripture. And likewise, also as it, I, I can see that better than I can in my book. Likewise, also as it was in, was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. <laughs> Glory to God. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man shall be revealed. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Now that's, now that's what the book says. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And you see, this I, I, I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I don't want to preach all day. I, I'm afraid you didn't bring a sandwich with you. <laughs> but but you, you, you see, uh, 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 saints of God, 
We know when we see, read the scripture, just like I've given to you, that Jesus said, no man knoweth the time and the hour which the Father has put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and into the utmost part of the world. But he said, no man is to be a, a, a date setter. But I want to tell you the story of Noah and the story of Lot is about as near a date setter as we have in the sa sacred scripture. That as it was in their day, so shall it be with the coming of the Son of Man. Now I said all of that to, to say this. Uh, in such an hour as this, this did not slip up on God <laughs> of all that's going on in the nation, all that's going on in the universe. This didn't slip up on God. Now I'll tell you, I, I, I tell you the wife and I, by God's grace, we have uh, escaped the COVID <laughs> by God's grace. Uh, that's, that's all. Uh, and being careful wearing a mask. That's all I can say about it. But I want to tell you it's a bad old thing. But I want to tell you something else that you already know. This COVID virus that was such a killer did not slip up on God. He, he, he is all powerful and almighty and he is all knowing and he's still on the throne. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth and, 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 and he, 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 the Lord God all powerful and almighty reigneth. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going. I'm going to move right along. Now, what I've told you, uh, some of it thus far, it, it could dampen our spirits. You know, there's a diagnosis and there's a prognosis. Now, when you go to a doctor and he says, "I think you've got double pneumonia," he examines. I think you've got double pneumonia. Well, but he said, I've got a prognosis for you. Yeah, I'm going to give you two shots and you go home and be on bed rest. <laughs> that girl's in the medical field, you know. And so thank God the, the doctor had a prognosis. And now saints, for just such a time as this, we are here. You and I are here. We are right here today. <laughs> Glory. And, and I, I want to just mention who we are whose we are and what we've got in God. Now, number one, who we are, if we are a Christian, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm speaking to Christians today, and, and if, you, if you've been born again from above, <laughs> it's getting in my feet, say to God, and, and oh, a person that church and go to church every Sunday and hasn't been born again from above, they're just playing church. <laughs> Glory. Uh, and so we that are saved, we're the blood washed. That's who we are. <laughs> We've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Ghost. I am. <laughs> Glory. And Whose are we? We are the righteous. We are the righteousness of God. That's who we are. Glory. In Psalms 100 verse 3. Know ye the Lord. He is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Listen to this now. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. That's who we are. Glory to God. And what we have in God. Now you know the scripture that there a place, I, I believe it's in Romans, that those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so that's who we are. We are the sons of God. We are, we are kinfolk through the blood. There, there, therefore, uh, uh, we are heir, we are heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ, the righteous. <laughs> 
the almighty God of heaven don't have any grandsons. He don't have any great grandsons. He just has sons. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And, and he's my father. He's my heavenly father. What do we have in God? My father owns the heavens. My father owns the earth. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And I'm his heir. <laughs> oh, that's who we are. Now, now, saints, if we're not careful in a time like this, we'll take the tuck head and we'll get the mully grubs. But now, if we if we have been doing that, we need to pull out of it. Glory! We need to pull out of it. And let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> and with all the good things that we have through the through Christ our Savior. <laughs> Jesus left us some things, saints. He left us this. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> now, in an hour in which we live, in a such an hour as this, as this, my nephew is a fine young man. He's 60 years old, and I think of him as being a boy. He said, Carly, I got to where I don't listen to the mainstream news anymore. Said so you can't believe half of it anyway. Now, I'm not picking on that's what he said. But I'll tell you, here's a book you can depend on. Oh, this, this book has brought us from where we were to where we are. And this book is going to take us safe on the, and we can make a safe landing. <laughs> and he left us something else. For just such a time as this, he left us the church. You know the source of well, and I got, I got to move on it. Before Jesus left the earth to go back to the heavenly Father after his resurrection, he, he, he had, I believe it was 11 disciples at this time. He took them out to the Mount, Mount of, of Olives. A Sabbath day's journey from Jerusalem. And after he spoke to him, them, he raised his hand and blessed them. And they turned and headed toward Jerusalem with great joy. <laughs> with great joy. You see, they had been with Jesus for at least Three years and a half, they had the best teacher this world has ever known anything about. And that was the Savior himself. They graduated from the, from the school of divinity. And it was time for Jesus to give them something as he left here. His most prized possession. He had found the church upon the rock. He had built it on the rock of ages. Oh, he was a master planner. He was a wise architect <laughs> and, and, and master builder. And he said, on this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hear this preacher. Hear this preacher, the church is still here and hell will not prevail against it. Oh! 
<laughs> Brother Daniel Hill, of the many things that I appreciate about the church, one of them is the fellowship of the brethren. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Sunday or two back, I, my wife and I, Drove a good distance to here to be a service. Got to the front door. Brother Aaron. And Brother Aaron, Brother Jack Aaron. I got there. Jack Aaron grabbed me and helped, helped me to his friend. Oh, he says, Brother Reese, you don't know how I appreciate you. And I think I grow two inches. <laughs> when these brethren just said, told me how much they loved me and appreciate me. Glory to God. Yeah. Ho, 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 ho. But to fill the church. He built a church on the rock. He purchased it with his own blood. He put in a church to fruit of the Spirit, the ministry gifts, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> what is he saying? You can make it. You can make it. Say to God. You can make it. In just such a time as this, you can make it. You, you, you know, back over in, in Noah's day, God was ready to completely annihilate the human race. And if he had, we wouldn't be here this morning. But when he, just about the time he got ready, he looked around and, and Noah found grace in the eye of God. And, and when he was getting ready to go on the ark, he said, in thee have I seen righteousness. <laughs> if Noah could live a godly life in a barrel of rattlesnakes, surely you and I can live it in such an hour as we live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the light of the rapture, for such a just such a time as this, the light of the rapture. Oh, won't that be some time? Won't that be a wonderful time? And 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 you know, <laughs> I think about about it a lot, and I think about heaven a lot because. I've got more family over there on that side now than I got on this side. And I'm from a large family. But uh, you, you, you know, uh, I, I, I think people imagine different things that they will do when they get to heaven. And I've heard some of them uh, express what they would do. And, and some really good Christians would say, when I get to heaven, I, I'm going to run up to Jesus and give him a big hug. But you know something, saints of God, I just can't hardly see myself doing that. <laughs> if it's all right for that, brother. I'm not attacking that. But I tell you what, I want to hear the master say when I get to the glory world. I'd love to hear him say two words to me. Well done. Well done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Enter thy in. Yet I'm going to see TKASO. Yay, nay, 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 oh, Kali di Asso. Ma, 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 mo, Siliaka. Oh, Kali di Osa. Oh, glory. Uh, uh, Sister Crockett, could I trouble you to come back to music? Stand with me to your feet, saints. Stand with me to your feet. You're, I, I believe you're the one of the best group of people I ever preached to. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell Brother Cornett, I believe he tried to preach me to death, Brother Cornett. <laughs> 
Oh! <laughs> and and I, I, I talked to the Lord about preaching. And I say, Lord, what would you have me say to your people? <laughs> and I say to him, Lord, I except you anoint my head with fresh oil, all I'm going to be able to give them is a, just a dry lecture. <laughs> the anointing makes a difference. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. We don't want anything between, to be between our soul and our Savior. Can we come and pray? Can we come and pray before we go? Talk to the Lord. <laughs> Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in His sight, O Lord, my strength, my Redeemer. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in a way everlasting. Thank you for coming. Oh, thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. Thank you for praying. In times like these, oh, God. we need a Savior. In times like these, ye cut off sides, ye cut off sides. We need an Be very sure. Be very sure. Your name, Jesus. Praise your name. Your
Danny, I'll, I'll turn this back on just to, just to sign off. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, Danny? <laughs> I want to thank you from, my, from the bottom of my heart for your undivided attention. As I read the scripture and preached to you from out of my heart, I, I, I hope the feeling's mutual, but I've had myself a time. And I, I love you and I appreciate you. Uh, uh, Danny, is that the right time? 11.52. Hey, hey, you know, I, I thought I was going to have to go down to the chicken place and, and tell, her, tell them to wait, wait that you was on the way. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I was supposed to dismiss. Is there a word from anyone? Hey, Danny, you have something? Uh, stand with me till you finish. Uh, uh, Sister Crockett, we used to sing a chorus where he leads me, I will follow. I, I'll try to get him going. Okay, you, uh, you, can, you can start, go to. You start it. Oh. <laughs> you, you asked for <laughs> Where he leads me, I will follow. free to go. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Cox. <laughs> great. <laughs> it's okay. uh, I used to dismiss that way a lot when I